Hi, this is Ken Johnson for another episode of SecCast. This tutorial will cover using Burp Suite's extender API in Java. We will demonstrate building and compiling several custom extensions as well as discuss the Burp API. So to reiterate, while Burp does support Python and Ruby, this tutorial will only cover how to build a Burp Suite plugin with Java. So let's get started. The first thing you will need to do is download or save the Burp Suite API files. Now you can do this through Burp's website, or the other option is to export those interface files from within Burp itself. To do that within Burp, navigate to the Extender tab, Subtab APIs, and there is a Save Interface File option. Notice that we've created a folder titled EP2, which will contain the contents of our project. We're going to go ahead and create an empty folder named build within this project folder. The next thing we want to do is create a file named burp extender.java under the burp directory. Note that we have saved all of our burp API files under that burp directory. So we're going to go ahead and declare package burp which in essence allows us to call all the code of those files listed under the burp directory. The next thing we will do is declare a class named burp extender, which will implement iBurpExtender. We're going to go ahead and declare a method named register extender callbacks, which provides us with a callbacks object. This object allows us to call certain methods on it, such as set extension name which is a method that allows us to set the extension's name so that it can be recognized by that name within Burp. But that's just one example of something you could do with a callback. I would like to briefly explain for a moment where the method named register extender callbacks came from. For those not familiar with Java, by using the keyword implements, we've essentially inserted ourselves before the iBurp extender class in the code's chain of execution. This means since we want to intercept burp's callback object, we must first override the register extender callbacks method declared within iburp extender. You can see the register extender callbacks method is declared within the iburp extender class. So again, as I've mentioned, we need to go ahead and override that method with our own. As I just mentioned, you can call a function named setExtensionName on the callbacks object in order to name our plugin. We'll call this plugin setCAS. The purpose of this particular plugin will be to print to Burp's output screen. So in order to do that, we must create a standard out stream, which will require the print writer library. So let's go ahead and import that library now. So we'll go ahead and create a standard out object. Print writer takes two options, the location of the stream, in this case callbacks.getStandardOut, as well as a Boolean value of true or false to determine whether auto flushing will take place or not. You'll notice we call print line on that standard out object, and we're going to go ahead and print setCast tutorial. Well, now that we've finished writing our code, we're going to go ahead and compile it. To do so, we're going to use Java C, which allows us to compile those Java files. We're going to use dash D, which specifies the location that those files should be put into after compilation, which is, in this case, build. And then the second argument, burp anything.java, just says anything under that burp directory, which ends in a Java extension, compile, and place into the build directory. So again, just to reiterate, you can see now under the build directory there's another folder named burp and within that burp folder there are a plethora of class files which represent the compiled Java files under the top level burp folder. We have compiled our code but we have yet to package it in as a jar file. In order to do this, we'll type jar from the command line as well as provide a few options. CF to indicate our jar file name, dash C, build and burp, which basically says look in the build forward slash burp directory for all of the code that you can, pull it in and create the jar file with that code. 
And now that we've created the setCast.jar file, we can add that to burp. Can select it and hit OK. And notice that the output shows what we want, which is setCast tutorial. And we've successfully created our first burp plugin. We've removed the content from burp extender.java and we're going to create some new code. So we've declared the package burp and we're going to use print writer again so we'll go ahead and import that library. As we did before we will create the burp extender class which implements iburp extender and we will create the register extender callbacks function the same way we did before. Additionally we're going to create a standard out object similar to the way we had done this before. The difference being we will declare this as a print writer object outside of the class. That way it's accessible everywhere within the class, not just within the register extender callbacks function. Additionally, we'll create a helpers object which represents the callbacks.get helpers function call. We'll make that accessible outside the method as well. We'll give ourselves a extension name of setcast. And the last thing we want to do is register an HTTP listener. We're going to provide an argument, and that argument is this, which is a keyword for our current class. In this instance, burp extender class. We are going to create a method called process HTTP message. And it is important to note that these function names are not arbitrary. They are actually declared within the Java API files provided by burp. So in this case, we're going to override the process HTTP message function declared within the IHTTP listener class. So as I mentioned, the IHTTP listener class has a method named process HTTP message, and this is where our function name was derived. If we would like to override the process HTTP message method, then we also have to implement the IHTTP listener class. The code that follows should only execute if the message being processed is a request. So we'll make that if statement now. We'll create an HTTP service object. And it is a receiver of the message info dot get HTTP service call. Now message info is an IHTTP request response object. And if you look inside that class, you'll see that there is a get HTTP service method that you can call. And we'll create a simple string. The name of that object will be host. And it's going to be the result of a function call to get host. That will simply return the host name in the request. We will perform a sanity check to ensure that host is not null. So we make an if statement if host not equal to null. We will create a standard out object and call print line and print the host value out to burp. We're going to delete all of the files out of the build directory so that it is a empty directory. And we're going to compile all of the Java files again. Those files are listed under the top level burp directory. And uh, once again, we're going to package this jar file up with the compiled class files located under the build forward slash burp directory. Now that we've created our setcast.jar file, let's load it into burp. We're going to need to send some traffic through burp to test this plugin. So I'm going to hit refresh in my browser to send a request through burp. If everything worked correctly, you'll see the host name printed out to the burp output pane. It looks like everything is working fine. Let's move on to the third extension. I've gone ahead and removed all of the code from the last tutorial except that which is reusable and we've written twice now. And this way we just have some placeholder boilerplate code to build this plugin with. 
In this tutorial, we want to leverage the iProxy listener so that we can modify requests as they go through the proxy. So in order to do this, we're going to leverage the process proxy message function that is exposed within iProxy listener. I've pasted this content in, so I'll go ahead and clean it up. And we will use the override declaration. We only want to modify requests, so we make the if message is request statement. And we'll create an IHTTP request response object named message info. This is basically the result of calling get message info on the intercepted proxy message class. We'll go ahead and implement the iProxy listener. We will create a request info object, which is the result of calling analyze request on the helpers function. The headers are a Java list, or you might think of them as an array. And that array contains all of the request headers from that HTTP message. So this is going to be important for us as we would like to add to those headers and give it our own custom value. So we're going to create a couple objects here and then we're going to build a new HTTP message and update the message as it flows through the proxy. So in order to do that, we'll create a string called request and that string is a result of calling get request on message info. So now we have the request. We would like to get the body of the message uh, and strip that out. So what we're going to do is call request.substring on rqinfo and we're going to call get body offset on rqinfo. And then we'll create a new object called update message. And really that is the result of building a new HTTP message with the headers and message body that you have modified in some way. And in this case we've added a or we've added an additional header to the pre-existing headers. So the last thing we need to do is call set request with that updated message object. And this will allow us to update the message as it flows through Burp. So we need to add a few things here just to clean it up. So uh, we're going to import the Java Util list library since we use the list library elsewhere in this code. We need to expose the helpers object to every method that exists within this class. And then we just need to fix this pretty simple typo under message body. There were two S's. And that's it. We'll go ahead and compile our code the same way we did before. There is a warning uh, due to the byte declaration we used, but uh, you can ignore it. Now that we have created our jar file, we'll go ahead and import it into Burp via the extender tab. We'll hit refresh on our browser to send traffic through Burp. And hopefully, if everything went well, when we review our traffic in the HTTP history tab, there should be an original request, edit request. And within the edit request, you'll see that there is a header added called this is a test. And it looks like it worked. I'm Ken Johnson, and this tutorial was brought to you by Setcasts. Thank you.